It's a beautiful sunny day here in the South GA and it's time to get some tomatoes planted. Here we are the last weekend of March. We've got some nice looking tomato transplants and we got to get them in the ground. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you're a frequent viewer of the channel, it's always good to have you back. We're going all out on tomatoes this year. We're gonna plant about 250 row feet of tomatoes. Look at all those pretty tomato transplants right there, just ready to get nestled in some good garden soil. I've got about 10 different varieties we're gonna be planting today. Some we've grown for years, some we've never tried before, some determinate or mostly determinate and a few indeterminate varieties. Let's take a look at where we're gonna be doing all this. So this plot here is one of the oldest garden plots I have on my property of the 10 plots that I have. And this also is some of the sandiest soil I have on my property. We came in here, put in a heaping load of that good gin trash compost. You can see that kind of black stuff in the soil there. That's what that is. And if we look down here at it, you can see, man, this stuff is just sandy, fairly powdery, but it, it's pretty healthy soil. I always pretty much have good results in this plot right here. A lot of organic matter in here because we've just been growing in here a long time. Nice workable soil. And we haven't grown any nightshades in here, I think in three or four years or so. So should be primed and ready to grow some good tomatoes. This plot is about 25 foot wide by 40 foot long. We're gonna be putting six rows of tomatoes in here today. So we're just gonna fill this entire plot with tomato plants. We already got our rows marked off where they're gonna be doing our rows four feet apart. I've done tomato rows five feet apart. You can do them wider than that. I've done them three foot apart before and it's just a little too close for my liking. So we're going four feet apart on our rows. We've got either a stake or a mark at the end of each row there so we can make a furrow and get our drip tape in the ground. In addition to things like squash and corn, tomatoes are another one of those crops where drip tape is really essential for us. Tomatoes can be prone to a lot of diseases and many of those diseases can really thrive on leaf moisture. So if we can reduce the amount of leaf moisture we have, we can have some healthier tomato plants and we can reduce that disease onset. Now, of course, we can't do anything about rain if we get a really rainy spring or really rainy early summer. There's not a lot we can do about that, but we try to minimize that leaf moisture as much as we can and that drip irrigation lets us do that. It also lets us fertilize these plants much easier because we can inject it through that drip system, put it right there at those roots and really give those plants the nutrients they need fast right when they need it. So let's grab our wheel hose, let's make some furrows and let's bury some drip tape. All right, all right, all right. Got our drip system hooked up there, all six rows. See them lines are nice and inflated there. Putting out some water with those emitters every 12 inches. And now we'll just wait on them water spots to kind of start to develop because that's going to tell us where we need to put our plants. Now before I show you which varieties we're going to be planting and how much of each, real quick for a minute or two, or three, four, or five. Let's talk about heirloom versus hybrid or determinate versus indeterminate tomatoes. Now, in my humble opinion, hybrid tomatoes get kind of a bad rap. And I understand it because 10, 20 years ago, most of the hybrid tomatoes didn't have much taste to them. But things are a lot different nowadays. And a lot of the seed companies out there that sell just heirloom or open pollinated seeds tend to throw hybrids in the mud a lot, kind of stomp on them a little bit and act like they're not that good or you shouldn't be planting them. But 
I would disagree with that strongly because hybrids give us a lot of productivity that we wouldn't otherwise get down here in the deep south. Heirloom tomatoes are great. They look neat. They have some cool color to them. They often have some really good flavor. And we grow a few heirlooms every year, but I don't count on those heirlooms to give me all the tomatoes I need to can or to put in my vegetable bags. I kind of just grow them for the fun of it. My hybrids are the ones I really count on for my productivity because I know they're gonna be able to withstand some of those harsh conditions that we have down here in the deep south. So yes, we do like to grow heirlooms. Yes, we do like to grow hybrids. You can grow both. You don't have to be against one or the other. Do a little bit of both. Use your hybrids as your go-to productive canning tomatoes. Use your heirlooms for just something fun and colorful to have in your garden. Now let's talk determinate versus indeterminate. So your determinate varieties are gonna produce loads of tomatoes in a short time span, and then they're gonna to be toast, you know, come midsummer. Your indeterminate varieties will grow for a longer period of time. They won't give you just that huge pop like the determinate varieties will, but they'll consistently produce over a longer period of time than the determinants will. But down here where we live, it gets so daggum hot and humid come summertime, any tomato has a hard time surviving. So I tend to lean more towards the determinate varieties because I know I'm gonna get a lot of tomato harvest before it gets super, super hot. I can get them all in that small window, that big production window that those determinate tomatoes provide. The indeterminates are good. We still grow a few of those cherry varieties and things like that, but they're probably gonna suffer the same fate as those determinate varieties when it gets really hot. So we're not gonna get as much production around here from our indeterminates as we do our determinants. Now, if you live up north where it doesn't get quite as hot, you can grow those indeterminates for a very long time and you can get some really nice continual production from it. So it just depends on where you live, what your conditions are, to what you need to grow there. If you have a really, really hot summer, you may wanna focus on more determinate varieties. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about heirloom versus hybrid or determinate versus indeterminate, which ones you prefer to grow and why you prefer to grow them. Now to what we're actually planting. So in our first tray here, we have got, looks to be brickyard. We've got a flat of brickyard and our 162s. Greg has done picked through these, but we still got plenty. Let's take a look at one of these puppies right here. That is a nice looking tomato transplant right there. Ready to go in the ground. Those roots aren't wrapping. Those little internal root training ribs in the tray have got those roots growing down. And these things shouldn't have much transplant shock at all. They should go in the ground and start growing pretty quick. And then in this tray right here, we've got several different kinds. Uh, black creme, sun gold. Let's see what this one is. Sweetie, cherry, some red snapper, which is a new one for us this year. And the tachi, which is a nice hybrid Roma tomato. And then moving over here to this tray, we've got uh, Celebration, Homestead, and the Chef's Choice Orange. All good looking plants there. This one here, I'm really excited about growing this one called Summer Pick. Heard a lot of good things about it. So we're gonna plant a whole row of those. And then lastly, we've got our go-to, our most popular tomato variety, which is the Bella Rosa. And Greg actually grew these this is a 338 tray. It's a little different than the 338s we sell. This is just an old tray we've had for years, but the ones we have are black. But uh, they actually did really well in these smaller cells here. I don't know if you can see there because it's kind of a shadow, but uh, nice little transplants there and kind of proof that you can grow them in even smaller cells than those 162s. And uh, those should take off pretty well too because they're not root wrapped or anything and um, should start growing pretty fast. Now, just like that old boy on Blue's Clues, I've got my own little handy dandy notebook here, so mine's red. And I've got it mapped out what I'm gonna plant on each of these six rows here. A tomato plot 2020 layout 
don't know if you can see that real well, but we're gonna do the first row, we're gonna do all Bella Rosa. Second row, we're gonna do all Brickyard. We've grown both of those before. We know those should perform pretty well for us. I'm really hopeful about this summer pick. So I'm gonna grow a whole row of those. And the third row there, each of these rows are about 40 foot long. We'll put those tomato plants two feet apart. So we'll get about anywhere from 15 to 20, uh, hopefully about 20 plants per row. Fourth row here, two new ones for me. I've got red snapper on one half of that row and then homestead on the other ones. The homestead, heard a lot of good things about that. It's supposed to be a really good heat tolerant tomato that'll set fruit in hot and humid temperatures. Fifth row here, we've got Tachi, which is our new hybrid Roma variety. Then we've got this celebration right here. And then our sixth row, I think I left black creme off here. I need to add that one. This is where we're growing our indeterminates, more of our specialty stuff. Uh, we're gonna do black creme, chef's orange, sweetie, sun gold, and this black zebra cherry tomato that just looks mouth watering awesome. Really, really excited to try some of those. Another thing that's a little different as far as growing tomatoes down south versus growing them up north is the size at which you put transplants in the ground. Down here, we like to put them in pretty small. We found they have less transplant shock. We get them in the ground when they're small. We don't have to step them up. You know, we pull them out of the same trays we planted them in. It's just a lot less effort and they seem to take off quicker. You live way up north, have a real short growing season, you probably want to put some bigger transplants in the ground. So if you have a short growing season, you can step them up to bigger pots and put bigger plants in the ground. If you live down south, I think you're way better off putting these smaller plugs in the ground. Now my emitters are starting to show. We can see that little wet spot there in the soil. So we're just going to kind of find our tape right there. And then we're just going to put this little Bellarosa plug down in there. Kind of plant it deep because those tomatoes will uh, form roots off the sides of that stem. So we'll put it in there deep like that right there. Now if you're planting real big plants, you know I've seen people use a shovel to make a big deep hole to plant them deep. With these plugs right here only so big, if we put them about that deep right there, we should be good to go. Whew. All right, all right, all right. We got them in getting a little toasty out here today we got all six rows planted some nice pretty tomato plants there in the ground very exciting time here got that drip tape running keeping those babies nice and happy to those roots take hold in that new soil there now you'll notice i didn't do anything silly like putting a fish in the hole or egg in the hole when I planted these tomatoes. We will give some calcium to these tomatoes because it helps prevent that dreaded blossom end rot. But we'll do it with gypsum and then we'll also be fertilizing these guys with some calcium nitrate along the way to give them that calcium they need so we don't get any rotting on the bottom of our fruits. So we're about a third of the way through our spring planting here. Still got to get sweet corn, peppers, several other things in the ground. Let me know how your spring planting is going. Also, let me know which varieties of tomatoes you're planting this year, which varieties you really like, maybe some that we don't carry, and tell me where you're at so I can get an idea of where these varieties perform well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you did, check out these two videos right here. Another two videos we did in the past on growing tomatoes. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. See you next time.